All right. Well, welcome to another episode of Herding Cats, which seemed like a sensible name to call this thing. And today I got um, I got Travis Carlton here. He's a big fan of the cat base. And uh, how long ago did you get your base? Uh, I got mine. I don't even know. I mean, the first order it was within a month of okay. of, uh, of when you guys started shipping for sure. So maybe like July, August. Yeah, somewhere, that's somewhere. that sounds right. Okay. July. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, if you if you don't know who Travis Carlton is, uh, shame on you. Um, he's <laughs> he's he's a pretty amazing killer, highly sought after and regarded player, uh, especially in the Valley in L.A. Um, so tell us a bit about your career and what you do and what you've done as a player and just kind of flesh that out a little bit. Sure. So, uh, yeah, uh, my father is a well-known guitar player, Larry Carlton. So I definitely got to start playing with my dad at a pretty young age. Mm -hmm. um, so toured with him and then that moved into working with uh, Robin Ford. Um, I used to play with uh, Sarah Bareilles, the beginning of her career, just mm. L.A. hustling. I did years with Scott Henderson. Oh, yeah. Uh, played a lot with Michael Landau um, and wow. currently with Josh Smith, Kirk Fletcher, like all those guys are my friends. It's hard to like list them <laughs> as artists yeah. at this point, but yeah. I know with people it, it, it adds up. But yeah, so a lot of guitar players, and obviously, I think uh, growing up in a guitar household probably had to do with that. Yeah, it sounds like it. Wow, man, kind of a who's who of all the killer LA guitar slingers there. Yeah, yeah, lucky right in that, uh, that regard. Cool. Well, how's things gone? Um, I'm, we've been touching a little bit on, you know, the new normal over the last nine months, and so what have you been up to during the the pandemic in terms of playing? Oh. Uh, yeah, trying to keep sane mostly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. it's like we were just saying before we started the interview. I mean, it's definitely the work has picked up more in the last couple months, the mailbox sessions and um little like I went to Nashville this last month and did a couple sessions. And you know, I mean just like little things, but it's it's definitely a new normal. <laughs> right. are, are you are you set up for recording at home? Yeah, definitely. Cool. What do you so what do you use for that? Uh, I actually, I had a room for a while where I was doing drums and everything, but I let it go at the beginning of COVID because I didn't want to pay the extra rates. So my rig is is like an old school HD3 rig, like a oh. TDM, you know, with the PCIe cards and all that. Cool. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm rocking what was a great rig in 2008. <laughs> so sort of sort of vintage vintage digital Pro Tools. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> vintage digital with 192s. Um, I mostly use this uh seventh circle audio um oh. n 72s mm -hmm. killing killing preamp I've, i mean i've owned a lot i had some bae stuff and all that's that, hilarious I, I really love this preamp i have one of those i, I bought a seventh circle kit yeah and i have an n72 i have their api one a jensen uh, oh did you you got the dual 1099 yeah, the, the dual J99s. servo yeah yeah that's a cool um, preamp too yeah vocals and stuff i have a couple of those i think i have one i might have bought a direct injection module but um i can't remember i think there's one more i have four yeah I, so, so i ended up filling it halfway the other four just stare at me like Hey, you should put something in here, <laughs> dude. Those those J ninety nines are killing too. Yeah, I mean for it, a different great. time, they just just headroom for days, man. It's so great to have those, those all those flavors there too. You know. Yeah, so, yeah. Every time I tripped out plugging in a ribbon mic to the J ninety nine, and it was bigger than I mean, I just massive, massively yeah. huge. Wow, for a ribbon <laughs> mic too. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, right on. Oh headroom. man, well, all right, we could definitely geek out on recording stuff a bit more than this that's that's fun <laughs> I, I have an, an apollo a ua apollo setup here which i uh, i adore that the, the seven circle stuff is at the shop where yeah. we're building the new studio someday i'll get all that sh stuff plugged in again so um okay cool um so so then, then like the next thing i like to, to ask, ask i've been asking guys on this interview is um what was your experience kind of getting to know the base maybe even going back as far as um you know your first maybe seeing a picture on social media or whatever and then you know nam shows and then actually to, to when you got it in your hands finally 
Well, for me, because I was off all social media for about six or seven years, I I knew nothing about it and just stopped by at NAMM. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And, um, you know, to say hey to you guys. And, uh, you know, Marilio is an old, old friend. (laughs) Like me and Mo go back 20 years at this point. So, you know, and walk up and give everybody hugs. And I'm actually like a total geek for short scales and more specifically like old department store instruments right? Yeah. <laughs> as it is. So, I mean, like instantly after saying hi and give him a hug and he's like, did you see this? And my mouth just went, Oh, <laughs> like, cause I knew what it was. I've actually never played uh, Goya Panther, but I was aware of that instrument out there. Right. So I definitely knew what like you guys were going for. Yeah. And yeah, so instantly, I mean, I had to try it, but it was at NAM show. And um, yeah, man, that first one, I mean, I know you guys had so many people coming through, but I was like ecstatic. I called yeah. LaFave first thing. He asked me, yeah. to see you. I was like, dude, you fucking hear this thing? Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, I, I just, man, I, I love my fenders and my fenderish stuff. And I mean, if mm-hmm. I can only play one bass, it's, it's most likely going to be a jazz or a P bass. Right. But for um, for like recording work and all that stuff, man, it's just there's something about some of those old strange instruments and where yep. they sit in the track sometimes that um, totally is, is yeah. really beautiful. And it's it's a more specialized tool, but it's it's a great tool and a handy right. one for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, mine was at NAM a couple years ago. And definitely I was waiting that year and then saw you guys next year and you're like, I swear to God, we're working it out. <laughs> They're coming. They're coming. coming. Yeah. 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 And, um, cool. So, so then when you finally got one in your house and your in your space, um, start going through the switch settings. And I mean, do, do you recall much of how that unfolded? Yeah, it definitely held up to what I had built up in my mind. I can say that to oh, start cool. with because I That's was good. definitely excited about it. Put my deposit down right away, you know, as soon as you guys were accepting and stuff, because I was I was excited about it. Like again, mm-hmm. it's just too much up my alley of like, oh, this one. <laughs> And then the price point too of like what right. are you not gonna buy this? Like <laughs> right. are, you, cool. are you crazy? You know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I can say it held up. And of course, getting to know it just like any instrument has been everything. I mean, um uh, the the minute I got mine, I put flat wounds on it. Like sure. within the first hour of having it, I played <laughs> it for a minute and I remembered playing both of the bases at NAM too. I'm like, yeah, I, I gotta put flats on <laughs> right. that's kind of my vibe. Um, and yeah, you know, all, all the settings sound great. It just depends on, on what you're going for. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on where the track's headed and what people mm-hmm. are. Yeah. What, what kind of sound you need to fit in. I do. I do find myself, I mean, like my favorite setting and, and kind of where I start with it a lot is the front pickup with the mid notch in. Okay. Is, uh, where it gets that kind of hollow ish, um, yeah, I love that sound. It's, That's it's, a big supportive sound, but it's still kind of wide open. Like there's a lot oh, of space in it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. fun. And it's, cool. Well, it's it's got... I mean, that's that's the thing that I've, I've found because I've, I've been using it a lot on sessions for random people. I mean, pretty much it's it's in the bag every time I go now. Wow, And uh, right it's, it's, it. I've found that I like it when sometimes I feel like the P bass is a little big and a little, a, a little lost, maybe like okay. something about, you know, the, those short scales, the fact that they don't sustain as long and they right. have like, like it's just so centered, like something about that lack of overtones and sustain somehow it, it just, it feels real middle to right. me. So a lot of times that's that's where I'm going is is that big supportive sound, but with just a little less um wideness to it. It right. just feels a little more centered. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I've that's also awesome. I've been using the I I like the the split sound with the mid notch in too. Mm-hmm. Where I'm using both the, the pickups. I've used that one quite a bit too. Okay. Which has that cool, it's got a weird upper mid-range thing happening. That yeah sense. yeah i'm so glad you're getting into the that mid-notch because that's something that i i think a lot of people kind of don't know what to do with it 
Oh man, it was you know, instant for me because, and awesome. I never go there on an amp. Like, right. like I, I hate that button on any amp. You put right. that button on the amp. I'm awesome. Like, uh, man, but that's cool because that's it, you guys that's, found a cool thing with that. Was that on the original bass? No, no. This was another thing that I kind of added. So that, and then that's the series, the series mode because the yeah. original Goya had um, it only had three tone settings, um, and, and it didn't have a notch. Um, and and I, I prefer calling it a notch as opposed to a scoop because a scoop implies what you're talking about when you when you exactly. hit that button on an amp and it's designed for slapping usually. Yeah. This one's really not intended for slapping. It doesn't work right for that anyway, at least to my yeah. ears. Um, so so it's it's um, it's more of a, a like a, a producer switch. Like when you have an engineer who's like, ah, that bass is a little bit thick. Can we uh -huh. can you scoop? Can you scoop some one K out? And then you hear the bass player. You're like, hey, wait a minute, click. Yeah. Okay. And then suddenly the producer's like, oh, wait a minute, now it fits in, you know, it, it made space for everything. And, and, and I, I really, I love that, that you're, you got onto that right away because I think some people have kind of missed the potential power in that. Well, in also that that's the setting, the, the uniqueness, man. I mean, that's one of the, that's honestly part of what, not the, the fact that it was a button, but the sound of what that button does. So let right. me be specific about that. Even <laughs> if it just did that naturally and you hit that button, I'd go, yeah. wow, this bass has a lot of personality. And yeah, yeah. again, like I, I love, don't get me wrong, man. I love my five strings. I love, I love all my instruments for what they do. But like at this point, I feel like I have a, a couple great jazz basses, a couple great P basses that all sound different. And I have a yeah. five string that's a Swiss army knife, you know, like right. I have those things at this point, I am looking for something different like right. just like anything that brings a slightly different flavor because as we know i mean like at the end of the day we notice it the drummer might notice it while we're playing right. but in a track it's either good bass or bad bass it's right hardly it ever works like, or it doesn't oh yeah. that bass sounds strange what you know like what is it what right. i'm always looking for something that just has a little more character than that because i find a lot of times that's the stuff that bails me on sessions Right. I'll feel like something doesn't feel right or we're playing and then instantly I pick up a bass with a totally different character and the same part might be great all of totally. a sudden. So suddenly it works. Yeah. 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 It, it's so fascinating. That's one of the things about music that, that it's just, I mean, there's infinite, you know, variability and, and it just, it's, it, and it's such a, a fleeting intangible thing, usually that inspiration that it's like finding that thing that makes it work is such a, a i don't know it never ends well and we all make chase. different choices and they, I, I know, and in I, the I, end I, they all work but exactly you know yeah. that's that's why you hire certain people to do certain things <laughs> totally yeah exactly i was just watching um earlier in the pandemic we got a membership to that master class mm -hmm. thing that you can and I, they, they got one there with alicia keys now phenomenal just phenomenal she talks about her songwriting process and how these songs came together and then she gets into producing and how she creates tracks from from the bottom and how it's always about finding that emotional connection to what's happening just fantastic and, and that kind of just because that touches on what we're talking about right now with, with sound and the way things come together and everybody's different she stares at the cameras as you do what you do Nobody else is going to do that. I was just like, ah, yes. Talk well, to that's, girl. that's, I was, mean, that's, awesome. that's the whole, that's, yeah. I mean, you know, we're getting all philosophical. Yeah. Now, but I mean, yeah. that's, that's what I love. Uh, most of us love so much about music. And that's, that's the hardest thing about trying to be a player or an artist really mm -hmm. is to really discover who you are and then try and be like honest to that and serve mm -hmm. that purpose because we all have you know our influences and you yeah. don't get to be a good player without learning everybody else's stuff all the people that you're into that's that's how we go about it but it's there's also a point where it's time to realize like like the just in i mean just down to the basics of like the way you touch the instrument 
and mm-hmm. like understanding that like you might like someone else's sound but you touch the instrument so different from them that right. you can't chase that sound like that because you have a, a totally different approach to how to even just touch the string exactly yeah yeah um, yeah so so embrace your uniqueness i think is i think so lesson, right yeah yeah, yeah once you get, i mean when, once you've I, studied enough of everything then it's time to start trying to find your your own voice you know yeah, yeah it's it's that's that's all the beautiful stuff man i know for me i you know i played a five string a lot and still do i love playing a five string but mm-hmm. when i was younger like if you would have asked me in my early 20s my dream bass would have been like a mtd 535 or something exactly and yeah i wanted this like really beautiful full range sound and mm-hmm. was chasing that in a backdoor way but i also realized like well you, i play too hard for that that's never gonna happen like my touch is not even do that and then also that just naturally i like it bigger than that and with right. bigger comes darker <laughs> like so there was there was a switch in my head at some point of realizing of like well, what, so if I play too hard, I used to hear myself when I had like a Yamaha Nathan East and, right. and then was moving into the Sadowski, which was a good middle ground of what I was doing, was that I would overplay on it, but it wouldn't give it back. Where mm-hmm. like when I started playing, you know, like jazz bassish and more specifically passive instruments, I felt like I was digging in and you can tell I'm digging in. It might even be too much and sound bad, but let's embrace that that's that's right. obviously part of how i play so let's find instruments are. that actually like lend themselves to that right that exactly. exaggerate it more instead of try and hide it yeah right on cool very cool i i, I love kind of getting into this depth of, of players and 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 how you can find your voice and, and embrace your voice i think i think this is great man we should do, you should do more interviews. <laughs> it's cool. Um, so, 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 what, what are, what are you hearing from, like Josh and and people that you're playing with and and recording for? I mean, so you're recording at home, so I know you you send tracks off to people. Have you done the thing yeah. where? Well, you're like, oh, I got a bass for this, but I'm not going to tell you what it is and then send somebody a track. Well, and I've, I've also had a, a few very social distance sessions where okay. they've been brought to. But yeah, at home and definitely Josh seen it. Josh loves it. He hasn't hit right you up yet. He no, not put yet. His money down because no, he was no. already on the line. Oh, man. Dude, awesome. I got to get one of these. because well, Maybe when the I next mean, batch comes in. Yeah. Well, it's it's also it's one of those things where I mean, of course, we're bass players and, and talking about that, but because of the size of this instrument, mm-hmm. it's silly for guitar players to not buy that to sit at home and do your demos or you're you know making music for Discovery Channel. I guarantee right. you, you'll play this instrument better than you play the full sized one. Totally, it's, it's yeah. more yeah. relatable, and that's what Josh was tripping on. Is like, wow. I can actually kind of play this. Thing. <laughs> yeah right on cool i want to hear some josh it. josh bass chops yeah um, and um i mean yeah i've gotten a lot of comments i used it on some live streams and and stuff like that and yeah people people have all been digging it mostly i mean the funniest is is uh the people that just aren't hip to those kinds of instruments to begin with so mm-hmm. they're expecting me to pull out you know a big instrument and you pull out this little thing and everybody yeah. looks at it like you're gonna play that <laughs> and then they hear it and go oh yeah that's great that's wow. that does have yeah. a sound yeah. cool cool yeah that's pretty common it's a small instrument especially bigger people like like tim well like myself you know? yeah. for and, me and, it's yeah. like this tiny little. i'm so big man it's this little thing of like yeah. hey, did he get bigger did travis put on another hundred <laughs> did, 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 did he get bigger the bass gets smaller <laughs> yeah yeah wow right on man um any any particular uh anecdotes for like recording with it that you can that stand um, out well i mean just just if you end up liking a lot of the single coil stuff find that spot where you hum the least because mm-hmm. it it uh it, you know it's a single coil pickup there's a little noise but yeah. it's not so bad i mean right. definitely it, it hasn't hindered me at all 
Yeah. Um, yeah, that and don't slap it. Come on, man. That's not <laughs> that's not what this race was made yeah. to do. You know, it's funny, I've actually been... <laughs> and watch, dude. Somebody, somebody's slapping it right now and killing it, and then they're well, just we... gonna make me sound like an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it's funny you bring that up because I did talk. I talked to Tim about that a little bit. And yeah. I talked to um, I think Gary Wicks a little bit about that. And and if you can adapt your technique to the instrument, you can actually get a pretty oh, vicious, sure. like like seventies style, almost like a P bass vibe slap tone. That's um, I I can which, see some forget me nots, which stuff. is yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so it, totally. it, it does a, a certain thing in the slap realm that that is surprising, and <laughs> and I think if if done, you know, selectively and carefully, it could really. I, actually, I've done some things with it. I think that, that's the the, that the idea with slap slapping in general, selectively and carefully. Exactly. <laughs> right. Please don't slap at Nam, which yeah. thankfully this year we don't have to hear any of that. <laughs> but, and I'm, but, I'm, calling, I'm calling BS on the fave, man. He's never slapped a note in his uh, life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are you probably oh, you're right? Out, Timmy. I, I, That's I, bold, I, man. I, well, now I see it, it might be me. It might be me getting in trouble here, mixing up who I've who I've been talking to. So no, uh, it's all but, good. I'm just talking yeah. trash. Oh, you know, it's funny. I was watching. Um, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna interview Bob Glob here in a little bit, one of these days. And I was watching uh, um, that that show he did for. Um, oh my God, I'm not awake yet. Um, it was 1980. Um, oh my lord what am I forgetting her name uh, Linda Ronstadt and it was this this show that they did in Hollywood in 1980 and he's playing a P bass of course but there's one track where he's slapping he's slapping on this you know I mean it was the 80s this stuff was a big deal back then you know it was because it was kind of a new thing and and I can remember watching my wife and I watched that the other night and I was like what he, he's slapping <laughs> on a P, on a P base in no, 1980, yeah. I was You'll just like, what? everybody doing it at some point. You have yeah. to. I mean, come on, man. That's one of the fun parts of the instrument. It really <laughs> is. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, you, you're gonna have to try it on this base then. Now. Yeah, so exactly. Now you gotta put the rounds back on there. <laughs> <laughs> or you could get another one and we have one of each. See. Yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> Next, so you have you got the five and six string version coming. Oh <laughs> no, no, that, no, there's that that's a step too far, my friend. I don't know about that. A bridge but, too far, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um anyway, so um man, thanks for doing this. I don't know if you have anything else, any other cat related stories or no um, man, for I mean, again, I just highly recommend it. And uh, yes, everybody has dug it that's heard it cool. and then you know of course there's the moment where you tell them the price and and then their heads kind of explode because cool. i mean that's that's the biggest thing is just like I, I i would hope anybody that gets one of these doesn't expect a fender first of all don't mm -hmm. just like and i don't mean the front pickups not p basey of course it is it's a front pickup but just right. like let go of the fender ideal and and understand that just because it's small and didn't cost you a ton of money doesn't mean it doesn't have tone like right right that's i, yeah. I don't remember that first one of the first uh the yeah the the the, the uh, first reviews and the guy i was okay you know dave it's not for everybody what, whatever right. but the toy comment had me a little heated and a little me, fired up man how many records you play on this year bro yeah. you about a toy like exactly wow. yeah doesn't sound yeah. like a toy <laughs> yeah i i I agree that 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 review kind of twisted me a little bit just because it felt like he didn't really even like do any real research about that was I, like, I think I told you I wrote things. a whole scathing thing and then just deleted it because again like you know whatever man it's the right. internet and homeboys allowed to his opinion too I'm not totally gonna, like yeah. you know try and like hurt somebody or something but right. it did feel a little lackluster of like dude do, do you even get it like it, it, well it's just it's it's just like if you're gonna be taken seriously as a reviewer of instruments you need to at least do the due diligence to understand really understand what you're doing what you're reviewing sure I, I, and that was i mean again i whatever he can do whatever he wants i mean there's going to be some some cheesy takes on on things here and there and, sure. and people have their preconceptions about what they're doing but um but you know 
I think you have a better chance of, of establishing yourself as respectable and credible if you spend the time to really dig into the details, you know, and, and understand and talk about what you're, what you're, you know, showing people and sharing with people, you know, with sure. some, with some re real re research knowledge. So, but whatever. Water. Under the <laughs> yeah. Bridge. Sorry. I shouldn't have brought that up. Water under the bridge too far. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, anyway, well, thanks, man. Thanks for doing this. And yeah, thanks uh, for having me on here, man.